uh, Cardinal Badroglio. He the arch was the Archbishop of uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina, is the new Holy Father, and he's taken the name of Francis, although he is a Jesuit. So uh, you can see he has a, a great spirit of ecumenism uh, already. <laughs> a Jesuit taking the name of Francis, very interesting. But I, I think that may give some indication of what his, what his programmatic view of his pontificate may be. Certainly this is a, a moment of tremendous joy for the whole church. Uh, that we have a, a new successor of St. Peter, and we have prayed all through the, uh, the conclave and through the, the, the pre-conclave days when the cardinals were discussing, we, we prayed to the Holy Spirit that he would send us uh, someone who would be an effective leader of the church. And as you know too, no two Holy Fathers are alike. Each one brings special charism, special gifts to the office. And uh, certainly this is a man who, at 76 years of age, has spent his whole life in service to the church and in, in very, very different capacities. So obviously he has finely honed skills over a long period of time. And, has many, many gifts I'm sure that he is ready to give and, and will be asked to give in service to the church. So uh, it's a moment of great joy for the whole church. And again, we have a Holy Father. We have a, a sign of the Lord's presence in his church, promised to Peter that he would be with his church always. And it's a sign of God's loving providence for us that the, the, uh, the Holy Father, the successor of Peter, Peter is with us again. So that's a great consolation, comfort and consolation as well as joy. It's interesting, I was, I was recently in Baltimore for the leadership roundtable of church management, which had, among other many other people there, also about 15 bishops. And one of the bishops said to me, that was just a few days ago, one of the bishops said to me, he said, you know, I, I feel somewhat lonely. I'm beginning to feel lonely without a Holy Father. And I think that's the way we all felt. We felt that we needed a, a shepherd, a shepherd of the universal church. And uh, so now we have one. He spoke in Italian, perfect Italian, and I would think that uh, given his name, he probably is of Italian ancestry. As you may know, Argentina has a huge Italian community. Uh, but I'm sure that uh, since he was a professor of philosophy also, of psychology, uh, that he uh, certainly will be a person who speaks, I would suspect, a, a number of languages as well. A new page is turned, a new era in the church is beginning, and I think it's a very, very exciting time as we look into the future. You know, one of the things which occurred to me as we were watching the, the television reportage of the uh, of the crowd assembled in St. Peter's Square awaiting the announcement of the new pontiff. They did a number of scans and different parts of the crowd and so forth. And one thing that occurred to me, and I thought was very evident, was the youth of that crowd. A very young crowd, not a crowd of old people, uh, but a very young crowd. And as, as our former uh, Pope, uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict, once said, the church is alive. And looking at that crowd, I think we have to say, the church is alive. And of course, this is a sign of new life. It's a sign of, of uh, our orientation to the future. And uh, we, I think, are going to have a, a wonderful Holy Father to lead us into that future, and who will be truly a shepherd, a pastor, and a teacher and a guide. So this is a great day, and we can rejoice and be glad. Can you talk about the significance of uh, the Pope coming from uh, you know, uh, Latin America, from a, a different part of the world um, than has been you know, traditional uh, you know, uh, you know, home for, uh, for Popes? Well, I think he comes from an area in the world that has probably, probably in aggregate the most Catholics in the world a concentration of the most Catholics in the world. So really in terms of, in that regard, proportionate representation, it doesn't surprise me that, uh, 
that uh, we're moving maybe out of a, a European model uh, or framework for this and more into a, a universal, a global uh, framework. So, uh, after all, we are the church universal. A Catholic means universal. And uh, I think uh, it's only, only appropriate that uh, other parts of the world also have a representation in the highest levels of the church. And Paul VI, Pope Paul VI, was the first Holy Father really to get people from outside of America and Europe into the administration of the church. He began making cardinals from Africa, from Asia, uh, from hitherto un, almost unknown little countries, even uh, cardinals. And because he wanted to uh, show that the church was universal, but also to draw upon the experience and the wisdom and the talent uh, and the diversity uh, that was there and make it work for the, the church. So he was really the first one to begin this. And in a way, I look upon this Holy Father as kind of that evolution coming to fruition. So I think it's, it's something that we should really greet uh, and welcome because we are the universal church. We are a Catholic church. So it's, I look at it as, a, as an important uh, step along the way of that particular evolution set in, in, in progress by Pope Paul VI. I'm, I have read only, I don't know this uh, uh, firsthand, but I've read that he, he would take the bus to, to work. He, uh, cooks himself, so in Italy I think he'll be quite comfortable as a cook. <laughs> but uh, certainly a man of uh, seemingly very easily approachable and very interested in the poor, the needy, the destitute, the marginalized, and also the politically persecuted. So in that regard, a very seem, seems to be a very pastoral person and will perhaps is his name Francis would indicate that he will be a very pastoral Holy Father also. I suppose I do have a statement here which I probably should read uh, and uh, you might want to draw a quote or two from it, I don't know, but anyway I'm at your service with this statement and uh, so I would like to, to read it. With great joy and thanksgiving to God we welcome the election of Jorge Mario Cardinal Bergoglio as Pope Francis, the 265th successor to the first Pope, the Apostle Peter. The Holy Spirit who has guided the Catholic Church through these two millennia has once again guided the election of a new shepherd, the spiritual leader of nearly 1.2 billion Catholics in our world today. Pope Francis faces many challenges around the globe, including the culture of death that blessed John, Pope, Pope John Paul II fought, and the culture of secular relativism that Pope Benedict XVI so often addressed. Pope Francis has the holiness and the wisdom to face these challenges and the others that haunt our world today. Pope Francis also inherits the promise made by Christ to Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. With Christ's promise and our prayers, Pope Francis begins his ministry to a world that I think so desperately needs to hear the gospel message of love and salvation. And I pledge my loyalty and my support to him in the name of the whole church of the Diocese of Greensburg. Thank you.